but not only bio-based polymers, polymers, yeah, and others, material, metal, ceramic, and so on. And afterwards, we will have two main parts. I mean, improvements of Arbo blend, yeah, you remember about, about Arbo blend, yeah, characteristics through deposit thin ceramic layers. And the second part, the same improvement of the characteristics of arboblend material through coating with silver, silver nanoparticle. The last uh, part, uh, we try to find, you know, application, especially on the food industry. Yeah, we already studied uh, the antibacterial uh, uh, research, I think, with you. Yeah, we talked yesterday that you are also involved in antibacterial, but, you know, it's not our research uh, direction, and I will skip, yeah, uh, this part. methods and the first one is physical vapor deposition is the method that I used when I try to improve the characteristic of uh, arboblend material I mean coating directly uh, of granules okay and afterwards we get the products using using injection molding machine so you can see over there uh, I tried to make the, uh, let's say, the presentation of the methods with, uh, with uh, the following parts. I mean, short description, and I tried to make a really short description of the method, yeah, because otherwise, you know, we can talk more and more about each method. Afterwards, uh, I will make the uh, presentation of advantages and disadvantages, disadvantages uh, material and application, yeah, for each method. So the first one, PVD, physical vapor deposition, you can see over there, take place under the vacuum. And please check also, please see also, yeah, how it's working, yeah, the sketch. Uh, under the vacuum condition, allowing, allowing uh, the vapor particles to move where? Towards to the surface of the part, but it's important without colliding with the molecules of the gas that will be present in the enclosure, yeah, inside of the uh, uh, enclosure. The particle condense on the target surface, forming a thin film. Yeah? You will see on our application about uh, around 5 micrometers, yeah, the thin film that we uh, got on the granules. Moreover, the vacuum makes it possible to avoid any chemical reaction. This is quite important. And I put over there an example about the copper. Because you know the copper, together with the uh, oxygen, yeah, can be a problem. Yeah? I put an example over there. And of course, we have a negative on the fluence, on the, uh, on the uh, quality of the deposited layer. So it's important uh, from the point of view. So, disadvantage. First of one, expensive equipment. The second one, requires cooling systems. Third one, can be appear some defects, such as exfoliation, cracking. Also, this method involves qualified personnel due to the high watt working temperature and the control yeah, premises needed on this equipment but uh, the, the main point because of the higher temperature, yeah? Another one, coating does not create chemical bonds with the substrate. And the last one, quite low productivity, yeah? It's really quite low productivity because half a kilo granules with uh, arboblend material, uh, it took, I think, uh, five hours, yeah? To make the full coating process. So really uh, low uh, productivity. Uh, advantage. Well, I started with disadvantage. Sorry, advantage. OK, environmentally friendly compared to electroplating and painting, let's say, methods. Allows multiple coverage method using the same technique. 
does not require additional layers of protection. Yeah, I, I mean beforehand, before coating with uh, material. Large variety of the powders that can, can be used, good resistance, higher durability, and good dimensional accuracy. And you will see about the accuracy that we got, let's say, for the film, film quite good uh, ac accuracy. Material used, organic and unorganic materials. Application, manufacturing of electronic electric circuits and integrated circuits. Transparent coating, reflectors and optics, aerospace, automotive, surgical, okay, medical industries, molds for all type of material that can be processes, and cutting devices, weapons, and so on. Another application. The second method, chemical vapor deposition. Let's see a little bit, a short, short description. This process involves exposing the surface of the pan that serves as the substrate to volatile substances. Substances that can react in contact with the substrate, thus achieving the deposition of the layer. Try to use, yeah, my... Uh, Okay. Advantage and disadvantage. Productivity compared with the PVD, yeah, little bit, let's say, higher productivity. Allows the deposition to hard to evaporate materials. Good reproductivity. High adhesion, high density, almost we can say here 100%. Expensive equipment also as main disadvantage. Complex procedure, toxic and corrosive gases, and of course also high temperature. Concerning the material that uh, we can use, metal or ceramic powders, and if you want to highlight a little bit uh, uh, industrial application, we can see over there optical fibers, semiconductors and integrated circuits, sensors and optoelectronic devices, microelectronic industry, yeah, especially in oxidation barriers, dielectric films, and of course, there are many, many others, let's say, examples that uh, uh, we can use the CVD uh, process. Electrochemical deposition. Electrochemical deposition is often performed in a true electrode cell at a constant voltage. It is well known colloidal technique for making ceramic coating in which charge, let's say, suspended or dispersed particle move through for liquid medium to deposit on the conductive substrate. As a main advantage, we have a uniform thickness of the deposit layer. This is quite important advantage because of the uniformity of the deposit layer. Quick deposit, yeah, so means a little bit higher productivity. Complex, uh, covers complex substrate, low adhesion and difficult to, to achieve cracks, free coatings uh, as, let's say, main disadvantage. We can use ceramic, Material, metal as material, and for the industrial application, surface treatment and anti-corrosive electroplating, aiming to protect the substrate by covering with a top layer. So, uh, let's say it's a very short description of the uh, methods. Of course, you can go to the, uh, let's say, uh, uh, different sources, yeah, and you will see over there that you can find technical parameters, optimal parameters, uh, and so on. Thermal spraying. So during the plasma spraying, which is performed in either an atmosphere and a vacuum environment, you can see over there a direct current is established between the electrodes using a plasma-forming gas such as helium, argon, or hydrogen. 
it can melt or semi-melt, let's say, state of the material, uh, I, I mean deposit material. This molten or semi-molten particle enter the spraying device to then be sprayed through a nozzle. Yeah, you can see over there, tower to the substrate. Okay, and uh, the layer, the deposit layer. The advantage, high spraying speed, productivity, low cost. And the main disadvantage, high temperature induced degradation of the substrate. Rapid cooling produces, you know, the amorphous, let's say, uh, uh, structure and brittle coatings. Material. In this case, we can, you, we can use metal, ceramics, alloy, and composite. And for industrial application, raffinery plants, water tanks, aircraft engine, cylinders, shaft, bushing, elements such as gas turbine, piston dies, guide rollers, bearings, and so on. Yeah, you can find also more, more, and more application. Cold spraying. We have a equipment on the material science focus on cold spraying. So this process is, a, is uh, an additive manufacturing technique used to make new parts, repair structures, yeah, it's important to repair structures and apply coatings with a higher powder deposition rate. The solid metal powder is accelerated in a preheated gas stream and properly towered to a target. When the flux hits the target, yeah, you can see over there, the metal particles deform plastically and adhere to the surface. The advantage low heating of the substrate, which is not thermally affected. It's important without thermally affected uh, the substrate. And there are, please? And that will be achieved with the high velocity. High velocity also, yeah? So we are giving high velocity so that we need not to give high temperature. W of course, uh, no, it's cold spraying. It's cold spraying, yeah? We have also the temperature, yeah, for the, you know, for the uh, gas, for the powder inside, yeah, but not for the substrate, okay? Yeah. It's cold one. There are no structural changes to the substrate. The metal particles for deposition are, are not melted beforehand, okay? Reducing their oxidation, homogeneity of the surface, low porosity. This is, let's say, the simplest and cheapest deposit method. Okay, resistance to compression, productivity, productivity also can obtain thin layer, but one of the constituents must be uh, ductile, yeah, as let's say main disadvantage. Concerning the material, metals, alloy, polymer, ceramic, composite, yeah, and industrial application, bonding of two structurally different materials and strength, strengthening of the thin world structure. So, and thermoplasma spraying, it's also the method that I used and we have the equipment on the uh, mechanical engineering faculty in our uh, university. I use this equipment yeah, to uh, coating the arboblem material with the ceramic, uh, nano ceramic uh, particle. We will see uh, soon the results. So the plasma jet thermal spraying, APS, is part of the thermal spraying technology. OK? So the APS process involves introducing particle raw material into the plasma jet to accelerate and fuse them with the deposition surface. surface. The process is based on the formation of plasmogen by dissociation and ionization of the gas in a high power electric arc between a cathode and tubular anode. So short description of plasma jet thermal description, uh, parma, uh, plasma jet thermal spray. Advantage, increases the lifetime of part, of course. Cost, cost reduction, reduce downtime or maintenance, increasing productivity, increasing product quality by improving functional characteristics, and you can see here some disadvantage. I mean, high working temperature that can affect the substrate. Yeah, 
at the very beginning, we were really, we were really let's say, afraid yeah, to use uh, a coating with a ceramic uh, particle direct on polymers. OK? Of course, because of the higher temperature. And that's why you will see later, we use first metallic layer yeah, as a first layer. And afterwards, we put the ceramic layer. Yeah, was, let's say, the beginning of our research. Rapid cooling of the deposit powder due to the cold substrate with which it comes into contact. And let's, uh, and now let's go to the improvement of uh, arboblend characteristics uh, through thin ceramic layers, as I mentioned you before. At the very beginning on our research, we took first three metallic layers, and afterwards we used aluminum oxide powder as ceramic layer. Yeah? Because of the high temperature, doesn't matter. Yeah? We took into account the lowest distance yeah, between part and, uh, and, uh, and the equipment. Okay? So the first one, you can see over there, the first uh, uh, metallic layer. We choose three different metallic layers yeah, for our research. I mean to check which is the suitable more yeah, to be as a first layer before ceramic aluminum oxide powder. Yeah? And the, the second layer, the ceramic one. You can see here the uh, same images yeah, of the particle that we used. And you can see here the sample before heating, before uh, coating, and the uh, sample uh, after uh, coating. Of course, because of the small uh, thickness, 4 millimeters for the samples, yeah, we had a little bit problem, yeah? including also the metallic layer deposition uh, and so on. Of course, after we decided to, to use the coating technology with ceramic particles direct on the polymers, we use, yeah, uh, let's say, 10 millimeters uh, for the uh, sample. So you can see here also the results, I mean, the uh, present mass of the aluminum oxide embedded in the surface structure of the analyzed samples. Yeah? So you can see the arbor material with the first metallic layer OK? And, and uh, afterwards, uh, aluminum oxide layer. Arbofor material with the second metallic layer and aluminum oxide. Arbofor for metallic layer and aluminum oxide. Why? Why? Because we were interested to check the deposition rate. Yeah? Deposition rate for aluminum oxide. OK? So the second material, arboblend, also using one, two, three metallic layer and aluminum oxide and arbofill material, one, two, three uh, metallic layers as the first layers, and aluminum oxide, the second one. So you can see also the um, present of the aluminum, the oxygen, and important information concerning the deposition rate of the ceramic uh, material, aluminum oxide. And you can see which were, which, uh, were the best results. Yeah? You can see in case of arbofor material, using the third metallic layer and aluminum oxide uh, afterwards, and the deposition rate over there, 78%. Yeah? Uh, if you remember from yesterday, the arbofoam material was 100% biodegrada biodegradation rate yeah? during 120 days. OK? The second position belongs to the Arboform also material with second, uh, second metallic layer and aluminum oxide. And the third, third position belongs to the, you can see, the arboblend material yeah, with first metallic layer and aluminum oxide as the second layer. Let's see a little bit uh, in line analysis. Yeah? Uh, the inline analysis more or less certifies the present and distribution uniformity of the aluminum oxide particle on the coated layers. Yeah? I mentioned before 
which are the materials which uh, metallic layer we use first, yeah? And you can see in case of arbofor material coated with the firm metallic layer and aluminum oxide, that we can get, we got a homogeneous layer of aluminum oxide incorporated into the material structure due to the high deposition temperature, yeah? Let's say it's a main conclusion, yeah? for this uh, type. Also, you can see yeah, which are the main components yeah, that we got. Yeah? Carbon, oxygen, of course, aluminum, and so on. Going further to the next one, I mean arboform with the second material, uh, second metallic layer, layer and aluminum oxide as a main, the same elements component you can see over there. So the conclusion, the homogeneous layer of aluminum oxide incorporated due to the lower deposition rate. If you want to come back, yeah, we will see the conclusion. In case of arbo blend material coated with first metallic layer and aluminum oxide, the material presents uniformity, uh, uniformly distributed particle. Yeah? More or less, we can take into account, you can see over there, yeah, the uniform distribution, let's say, of the particle. Yeah, I, I don't know to talk about the shape of the particles, okay? B because we are interested, let's say, o only on distribution of the particle. Because the distribution of, of the particles affect or not, yeah, all the other properties, mechanical properties, and so on, of the part. Uh, and now uh, let's go to the to the some experimental research because uh, as I, as you see uh, so far we use the metallic layers yeah as a first layer afterwards we decided yeah to make another uh, sample i mean using injection molding with 10 millimeters thickness yeah so you can see here the sample dimension 70 50 10 millimeters i mean it's the same sample that uh, we used for the water jet cutting, okay, also, yeah, the same uh, dimension. And uh, the injection molding process is the material temperature, uh, the material melting temperature 165 uh, and the injection pressure 100 megapascal, injection speed 80 millimeter per uh, meter per uh, minute and cooling time 30 seconds. Did you remember? When you talk about the uh, cooling time, I mean the cycle injection yeah, time, we got for the small part 31 seconds, okay? So in this case, after, after we design everything, the cycle, yeah, uh, the injection uh, time is 30 seconds because we have in this case only two cavities, okay? So during one injection time, we'll get only two parts. The position of the thin layer layer processes, we use APS technology that uh, we already I already presented with the techno technological parameters presented below. You can see azote, hydrogen, pressure. We used this time in our experimental research also three types of ceramics, okay, ceramics powder. You can see the first one based on zirconium, the second and the first one based on chromium, okay? So, uh, also it's, it's important here to see that we use the spray distance 145 millimeters, yeah? Uh, yeah, something like that, uh, Kalpak, yeah, something like that, yeah? Yeah, because it's, you, you know, is the uh, maximum or minimum distance that we can use yeah, uh, in case of APS uh, equipment. Okay. Uh, if you want more to talk, to, to see uh, the experimental plan, to see the, let's say, uh, material used and so on, please follow our paper yeah, published in uh, uh, Polymers. Let's see small information about the experimental plan. So you can see here the sample number. We can see over there the powder type. 
And please keep in your mind what means the powder type. You can see here it's free ceramic powder. As I mentioned before, first based on chromium, second based also in chromium, and the third in uh, zirconium. Okay, and I use only yeah uh, this. Let's say uh, numbers for, for 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 from the name. The thickness of the deposit ceramic layers was in micrometers order, thermal control of the process, laser uh, uh, pyrometer, and deposition rate constant one. It's important to have the deposition rate uh, constant one. So you can see also on the last column what? Number of the passes. OK? We use five passes. Of course, we stop the coating processes. We measure everything. We control the properties and so on. Yeah. We use another sample, at least three samples, okay, for the seven passes and last for nine passes, okay. All the results that uh, I will present uh, now will focus only on nine passes, okay, because we got, of course, the best results, yeah, from this point of view. Another researcher can make, you know, let's say, deeply research to continue, yeah, to see what happened after nine passes. So th this, is, this is the commercial name, OK? This is the commercial name. But I put inside, yeah, which are, let's say, the, the, the ceramic powder, yeah? Based on chromium, yeah? Because if I will come back. Look here, yeah? I put a little bit upside, in, upside down on the, on the next uh, slide, yeah? First one, yeah? Second one, and I put the last one based on zirconium, OK? And so the samples are coated with which of the three metal powders? Uh, uh, separate. These samples separate. All, all of the separate. Separate, three separate, ones. not all together, okay. not all together. Because we will free, why? to check which, is, uh, which are the best results yeah. and which is the best, let's say, ceramic powders that uh, we can use. Right. Yeah, not, not all together. Right. The uniformity of the deposition that we are having. What? Again. The uniformity in the deposition. You will see the uniformity. You will see. Yeah. Because the, this method, because we use the deposition rate constant one, yeah, we have, let's say, the uniformity deposition of the ceramic powder. We got, but we can check. We can check. Okay. As I mentioned yesterday, yeah, the DSC analysis. Uh, I put some information, but I, you know, thinking before I prepare my material, if uh, is good to to use or not to use. But uh, when, I, uh, when I saw the, the title of uh, our courses, I mean characterization of composite, okay? I thought that I'm not, and now I'm sure uh, that it's important to use, let's say, the characterization of the material. I mean to see the DSC, to see the XAD, to see uh, also today we will see the thermogravimetric methods. I mean TG, DTG, derivate thermogravimetric methods, uh, DTA analysis, because thus, as my opinion, we can get, let's say, the full image, maybe not full, not 100%, yeah, no, but let's say more than 85%, yeah, in our goals concerning the characterization of composite. So in this case, the DSC analysis, you can see highlighting the thermal behaviors of the tested sample. Yeah, nine passes. I will not repeat again. The results are focused only on nine passes. You can see the first ceramic powder, green one, OK? The green one. The second one, blue one, OK? And the third one, you can see the red one. So which is the main conclusion after the DSE analysis? We have to identify always the peaks, yeah? Because peaks show us what? The transformation of the material, okay? So the first peak, 
okay, for all the materials, show us slow monotropic transformation, solid to solid type of the same metastable crystals. The first peak over there, over here, based biopolymer crystallization or with the reticular reorganization of the lignin, the basic matrix of the biopolymer. The lignin is the main uh, uh, component element yeah, uh, from the uh, uh, chemical uh, structure. And the third peaks, you can see over there, melting of the arboblend material biopolymer. The same, you, if you want to check here, it's around 169. And uh, if you try to remember, yeah, from yesterday, around here yeah, was the melting temperature of the arboblend material. For the base material, yeah. for the base material, because for the for the base material we got two peaks, okay, one endotherm and one exotherm, yeah. and I mentioned yesterday that, that it's a little bit strange to have two peaks for the material, and uh, I mentioned I highlight that the second peak appear because of the water evaporation, yeah. but this is for the base material. Okay. Now we are talking about the. Uh, about the new material coated with ceramic nanoparticles, okay? It's totally different, yeah? Okay. T, uh, thermogravimetric analysis, TG analysis. What is TG analysis? W and why we use the TG analysis? To determine a material's thermal stability and its fraction of volatile component by monitoring the weight change that occurs as a sample is heated at the constant rate. Constant rate, the position rate, constant one, I mentioned before. And you can see over there some very important characteristics, I mean thermographic characteristics, yeah, on this table. Uh, you will see here all the uh, samples, okay, with three ceramic powders, and from this type, let's say, of uh, information provided by uh, software, it's important to check the following, yeah, which are the temperature of the peaks, okay, which are the mass lows, present of the mass lows, and which are, which are the residue, okay, is important. And you can see over here, yeah, for the, uh, uh, for the let's, say, let's take into account the first one, I mean 143 uh, ceramic powder, we have two decomposition stage. The first decomposition stage appeared as 341 Celsius. Yeah? And going further to see which are the present of the mass lows, around 85%, yeah? and read the next let's say the next let's say uh, uh, peak i mean 423 celsius and you can see over there that we have the decreasing uh, percent of the mass loss around uh, around uh, 11 for the next ceramic powders you can see also two decomposition stage appears more or less the same 346 426 but in this case also, let's say we have the same for the first decomposition state, the same present of the mass loss, a little bit uh, uh, lower the present of the mass loss for the second decomposition uh, peak. But in this case, the uh, residue is the biggest one, yeah, compared with the other results. And for the last ceramic powder, you can see 347. 426, you can see also increasing a little bit the first and, decrease, uh, and the same, more or less, uh, the present of the mass loss uh, in case of uh, second decomposition uh, state. Uh, in, in this case, for uh, 136 uh, uh, ceramic powder, you can see that uh, we uh, got the minimum uh, residue. Please. This is a new technique for me. What is stage one and stage two? Decomposition. What mean decomposition? Stage of decomposition, yeah? I mean uh, mass loss, okay? This is decomposition. So DTG analysis, 
derived thermographic analysis is the thermal analysis in which the rate of the material weight changes, open heating is plotted against temperature and used to simplify reading the weight versus temperature thermogram peaks which occur close together. So from this point of view, you can see the same more or less uh, uh, behavior. Another one, DTA, please, uh, Raghav. Raghav. What is the main difference between DTG and TG? TG and VR. Uh, so all, all, let's say, are the thermogravimetric analysis. Yes. OK? And I mentioned what means TG, and I mentioned what means DTG. I, I put that why because uh, I was sure that you will ask me. Yeah? TG. Yeah. It, it, it's the same, let's say, it's the same, let's say, how, how to say, the same, uh, another way to see the material weight changes. Yeah? Yeah? Okay, okay. It's the same, let's say, most of the, uh, most, uh, most, most, more, most, let's say, uh, observation. Because uh, TG, DTG, DTA are thermogravimetric, okay, methods. The DTA is the technique where the difference in the temperature between the sample and base material okay, is monitored against the time or temperature while the temperature of the sample is programmed. So here it's important information because also we can see the melting temperature of the material. Yeah, and w you, you also uh, Raghav can ask me why again the melting temperature? OK? It's, let's say, it's like a proof yeah, to see the melting temperature of the material. And it's confirmed by DSC analysis also. Or maybe DTA analysis con confirms that the melting temperature is the same after we get, we got the results from this DSC analysis. OK? Yeah, Arbo blend, Arbo blend. Arbo, Arbo, Arbo blend has lignin inside. Uncoated one will be the Uncoated, base Uncoated, yeah, will okay. Be the base yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. Surface and structure analysis of coated sample. You can see some images in case of uh, one force free ceramic powders. Uh, you can see the orange arrow as zirconium dioxide, also the blue arrow titanium dioxide, and yttrium oxide, the green arrow, which is the main conclusion, if you are looking over there. The uniform coating of a bio biopolymer mass is observed. More, the coating consists of spherical component particles, and we measure, you can see the particle, and the dimension is between 1 and 25 micrometers. Uh, is it visible? Yeah, you can see. I put some, let's say, uh, dimension uh, over there. Uh, the second one, 6420 ceramic powders. The main conclusion, a relatively uneven distribution of the particles. And I put also some, let's say, dimension 22, 27, 29, yeah? and others' dimension of the particle. And in case of uh, 136 uh, ceramic powder, the particles are of different shape with mostly polyhedral appearance, in case of titanium oxide, green arrow, spherical, in case of silicon uh, oxide, blue arrow, and rectangular, in case of chromium uh, oxide, you can see over there the orange arrow. 
And I put also the dimension. You can see the biggest one is uh, 62 uh, micrometers. Results and discussion concerning the EDX analysis. So you have to look, you have to look, you have to look here first and afterwards. You have also the legenda of the main element that appears, okay, inside. So in case of one force free ceramic powder, the presence of ceramic microparticles is in the first, you can see over there, 20 micrometers. Why? Because area, in this area, we consider to coincide with the thickness of, of the depositic ceramic layer. Yeah? That's why, let's say, during the first 20 micrometers, yeah, we find the ceramic uh, particles. The second one, the second one, I mean for 64, 20 with nine passes, chromium is visible over the entire analyzed uh, surfaces. Yeah, you can see the chromium. Yeah, you can see. However, it can be observed that in the first part of analyzed distance, also first 20 micrometers, the amount of chromium is higher. Yeah, the amount also of chromium is higher. I told you yesterday to, to check the main elements, components, yeah? Elemental the diffraction X-ray. The? In form of ADX. ADX, to see the components, to see the components of the material. Uh, and the last one, you can see, 136 ceramic powder. In this case, the ceramic layer on the right side of the image, yeah, I mean on the last 15 micro micrometers, silicon being a semiconductor chemical element which reflects its presence in the structure of the ceramic layer much more than the other constituents. We can check also the uh, legenda. And XAD analysis, this is, uh, let's say, uh, uh, simple because we have to check the peaks. The highest one yeah, is in case of one force free ceramic powders. You can see the blue one and, of course, the uh, red one. XID would be only on the surface level uh, analysis. And EDX is able to yes, yeah. measure until some okay. certain depth. Is that yeah, the yeah, 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 with little distance. So. Let's go to the friction coefficient. If you are looking over there, yeah, it seems that something is strange. Which one? Yeah, with the green curve. Yeah, the other one more or less are the same, I think, variation of the friction coefficient. So this is important because we have, you know, a sudden and afterwards gradual transition of the friction coefficient. Of course, we can uh, study and to explain more, yeah, why the friction coefficient uh, uh, for uh, uh, 6420 ceramic powder coating yeah, is, uh, let's say, with, with such type of uh, behavior, I mean, suddenly, and afterwards, uh, gradual, graduated, uh, let's say, variation of the friction coefficient. Microindentation test. You can see here which is the best results for the young modulus. Yeah, 2.0 in case of 6420 ceramic powders. Yeah, once three six ceramic powders, 2.90 uh, for gigapascal, and of course the micro hardness. You can see the highest one, 0 0.12 gigapascal in case of um, uh, 6420 ceramic uh, uh, powders. And then let's go to the next uh, uh, part. I mean improvement of the arbor material coating with silver silver nanoparticle. As I mentioned before, we use the PVD process, physical vapor deposition, okay, uh, process. Uh, in the first case, it was plastic. 
plasma spraying process, right? In the, in the previous yes. experiment. Yes. The first one, APS. APS okay. Yeah, yeah. And now PVD. PVD yeah. yeah. Okay. Right. That's why we, we, we made a general presentation, yeah. but we already highlight which were the methods that uh, we used. Yeah. Okay. So uh, here we use the PVD. Uh, Actually, it's, uh, let's say, uh, uh, thesis of one of my uh, uh, PhD student that graduated uh, uh, one and a half year ago. was the very good collaboration with Tor Vergata University of Rome over there. Now we will publish, uh, uh, let's say, the, the, the thesis on uh, uh, Cambridge uh, Publishing House because they accepted. And uh, you can see over there I mentioned that PVD has what? Low productivity, OK? I mentioned again, for half a kilo granules of fibroblend, took around five, maybe more than five hours, OK? And you can see here some picture yeah, during the coating process. You can see? Yeah. The black one, white one. And here is the picture, yeah, uh, let's say, on the final step of the coating. And uh, please, sorry, please come up. No, 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 no. Just to understand, are the particles also turned or agitated because you need to mm. coat all the surfaces? Yeah, right? yeah, so in yeah. CBD, it it's puts on in enclosure yeah. with yeah. the rotation, ah. yeah, and, and for, uh, from one the plate, yeah, yeah. you know, you use one the plate with uh, 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 a silver nanoparticle and coating, yeah, yeah. all the granules. And you can see here also the cross-section granule of uh, silver nanoparticle that we used, yeah? And which is the, uh, let's say, uh, layer of the silver nanoparticle? White one, yeah? And we measure, yeah, let's say, the layer thickness on different points. You can see here 5.8 micrometers, 5.6 micrometers, 5.1 micrometers, OK? So around, let's say, 5.5 uh, micrometers um, is an uh, average, OK, uh, for the uh, layer uh, thickness. The DSE analysis. And please take into account that uh, the experimental research, I mean also DSE analysis, follow two, let's say, curve. The first one, sample in the form of granule coated with silver nanoparticles. Yeah? And the second one, the sample obtained after injection molding. Okay? To see which is the thermal behavior yeah, in case of only the, the, the granule coated, and afterwards to see the behavior yeah, for the, the final product uh, got after the injection molding. So, you can see there are some peaks over, the, over there. The first transformation, I mean the first peak show us the transformation is slow, monotropic, solid to solid type of the uh, some metal, metal stable crystal. The second one means the material crystallization and the first one melting point of the material. Yeah? And check again the melting point, let's say more or less, 169 uh, uh, Celsius. We have also a paper published in Applied Science Basel. And if you want, you can uh, check to read all the information over there. Also, as I mentioned before, it's important the TG, DTG, and DTA. So in case of P1, we call P1, yeah? coated granule, and the second one, yeah, the sample printed. So in case of granule coated, let's see about the peaks. I mean, the first one is 348, second one 422. Yeah? The mass loss around 33%, and in, in the second stage, 11%. And you can see the highest residue is in case of the granule coated with silver, silver nanoparticle. In case of the uh, part that we got by injection molding, we have also two stages, 346 and 424. But uh, in this case, let's say 
the same more or less um, present of the mass loss, but uh, lower uh, residue that we got. The SEM uh, analysis, in case of the granule coated with uh, silver nanoparticle, it's important to see here that uh, we have a uniform distribution deposition of uh, uniform layer uh, deposition with micro cracks, yeah, micro pores, and unmelted silver nanoparticle. Yeah, but are not here. Yeah, there are also unmelted, let's say, uh, silver. Uh, na yes, 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 silver nanoparticle. Okay, yellow one. Yeah, small one. Yeah, look here. In case of the cross-sectional view, I mean of the granule coated with silver nanoparticle, you can see also I mentioned now we put more values of the layer, coated layer, you can see over there. And we made, let's say, an average for the all values and we got around 4.37 micrometers. Good addition between polymers and the coating I mean silver nanoparticles, because the lamination of the interface not being visible. It's not being vi visible. But as I mentioned, I think yesterday, we were not interested in the lamination, because we use afterwards the granules to get, uh, let's say, different parts using injection uh, molding. But the, uh, the delamination is not visible. Look here, yeah, 2,000. 2000, look here at the scale. So I think uh, the conclusion is uh, uh, quite good one. Surface in case of uh, injected samples and cross section of the uh, P2 uh, sample analyze. In the first case, we have the relatively uniform distribution of sieve or nanoparticle. And for the part that we got, uniform distribution of the silver nanoparticle, you can see. Yeah? However, there are, let's say, some discontinuities, namely groups of nanoparticles that are bordered by polymer structures. Because we can happen. Yeah? Uh, also, I just wondering yesterday yeah, about the presentation of my uh, friend about the agglomeration yeah, about the copper particle. Yeah? Because otherwise, if you will not check the agglomeration of the copper particle or other, another particle, yeah, the results can be a little difficult because we can te test it yeah, on the zone with, let's say, many, many particles. We will get the best results. But on the other parts, of the, of the, in another zone of the parts, yeah, can be, let's say, uh, different uh, properties. EDX and XAD, carbon and oxygen are the main constituents. You can see here around 47% for carbon. You can see 51% for oxygen. That means high degree of the biodegradation, yeah? and small only amount of the silver, 0.14. XAD analysis in case of our uncoated sample, yeah? When you talk about the XAD, please check always the peaks, OK? And make the comments of the peaks. Because I put here, let's say, only the general information. I mean, which is the f high, highest peaks? This one, followed by two, three, and four. But it's important to see which are the density, OK? And uh, which are the main elements, let's say, for each peak, OK? It's important. Because all is the reviewer ask, yeah, which means the first peak, yeah, which is let's say the material that can be attributed, yeah, for the first, second, and so on. Uh, DMA analysis I mentioned before yesterday, transition tan delta transition from one phase to another was not suddenly, storage modulo, transition to the viscous state was slower, and the damping you can see. Uh, 0 0.6 recorded around 65.9. <coughs> and what means? Means or denotes the rigid behavior of the material. 
And uh, of course, you can talk more about uh, coated, uh, let's say, uh, bio material. Yeah, but I uh, wanted to put only the main results. There are, of course, many many other results, but I put the most important, as my opinion, yeah, information to make a general idea how to do it and how to use the different me method in order to make, a, let's say, not maybe the best, but good characterization of the material. So what was your experience in injection molding that material? I mean, can you speak a little bit more about the injection molding results and how it... How it uh injection molding. Yeah. So we use the granule coated with silver nanoparticle. Yes. We use the same technical uh, parameters for the injection molding, the same as the base material, yeah. yeah? But the mechanical properties were not good. Tensile strands, yeah, yeah was a disaster, okay. yeah? Because we use particle, yeah. yeah? A little bit of increasing of the impact test. Okay. The impact test, a little bit good, uh, okay. uh, good result. But uh, as I mentioned yesterday, when I was talking about the particle reinforcement, we cannot talk about the uh, increases of the tensile strands, okay. only in case of the fiber. And does it okay? look, look, was there any change in the look of the, of the material? Yeah, uh, including also the color. It, it, even of course. Even a small amount of silver? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yes, oh, also including the color, okay. yeah. And uh, uh, now we want to start, uh, let's say, uh, another research because many, many, some researcher asked why we used uh, silver nanoparticle right. because of the antibacterial properties, right. but also copper. Yeah, right. we can use also copper, and uh, we will be, let's say, the next yeah PhD. Why not thesis? Yeah, to make let's say the same experiment but using the copper, copper. copper okay, can material. Can we Two. Can we use chitosin also in at place of silver? Can be, can be, can be. But uh, our next proposal is to use copper, yeah? To, for coating? Yeah, of course. Of course, you can use biometallic, mater uh, biometallic materials and uh, to use the same, let's say, material for coating. Yeah, of course, you can use. But we are based, you know, on, on uh, biodegradable material because this is uh, what we are doing, yeah, on the last more than 12 years, yeah. yeah, and we want to carry on in this direction. I will not change. <laughs> it's and too late for me to change. Biometallic, it's biometallic uh, nanoparticles. Yeah. So like the combination of two, like copper and yeah, silver. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You, you, you can start. You can try to make. Yeah. Uh, I'm still wondering about how to measure the coating thickness and how we can ensure the uniform coating for. All the particles. I, I show the thickness of the layer, yeah? Okay. Coating. For each I, I show. Uh, uh, granules we have to measure? No, for, for, for each granule to measure? No, <laughs> it's not possible. <laughs> How can I do it for each for each granule, you know, half a kilo uh, granules to, to measure the... So it is very... No, I, I choose, you know, we have random, I choose random, yeah? Thick. Some granules, uh, we made an average or something like that. Yeah, and it's easy on microscope to, to check, yeah, to, to measure, yeah, the layer thickness. It's, it's quite easy, no problem. Uh, because uh, granules are also not uh, spherical. spherical one. It yeah. is a little bit elongated. Yes, of course, of course. That's you, you, you know, it only inside of the calculus, calculus, we make the approximation to have the spherical shape, yeah? But on the reality, it's it not, not uh, circular, yeah. Not the shape, not the same shape, okay. Is it has it been tried to uh, see coating gives a very homogeneous uh, addition of say water like in case silver. Have we also tried to just physically just mix the silver particles and then No I didn't. That I, I, I will make the presentation tomorrow. Yes. Yeah? yeah. Uh, on C, uh, I will make the presentation tomorrow because uh, we have, I got a patent, yeah, for such kind of uh, equipment that you said, okay. yeah, to mix, yeah, but for different matrix, uh, you will see tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, I have a patent for this equipment, of course, in Romania, yeah, and I, I will present tomorrow the equipment, yeah, but in this case, no, no. 
uh, another research direction, yeah? So we made the coating of the granules, okay? Yes, we can have another possibility, I mean, to compare the results, mm -hmm. but for sure will be better, I think, to, to have a coating with silver nanoparticle, yeah? On the surface of the uh, injected part, part. Okay. okay? Not on the granules, but for sure. Yeah. I think the results will be okay. But taking into account the antibacterial properties, yeah. Yeah, it's, better, it's better to be, you know, inside of the, of the mass, the volume. Yes, yes, I think.